changing your world. Ruth 4, and we're going to be reading from 1 to 22. And then Acts 6, 1 through 15. So I want to turn over there too. Everybody bow our heads. Lord Jesus, we praise you this morning. Lord, we want to glorify your holy name for your presence this morning. Lord, we just plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one here this morning. Lord, that every ear would hear, every heart to receive what you have for them this morning. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet this morning. Lord, I pray that you take the coals from the altar. Lord, that you would place them upon my lips that I would speak truth into the hearts and the lives of your children this morning. Lord, you are the true shepherd. You are the great I am. You are the way. You are the only one way, Lord, and there is no other way. Lord Jesus, this morning, as we t come before you and receive your word this morning into our hearts and our lives, let us be changed from the inside. Lord, that we walk out, Lord, with more revelation of your word this morning. And Lord, that we be more like you and less of us. Lord, that you may de increase, that we may decrease this morning. And Lord, this morning, this word is for uh, our lives, that we may decrease and that you may increase in us. And let us go out with lights shining in the darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. Changing your world. In Ruth 4, 1 through 22. Then went Boaz up to the gate and set him down there. And behold, the kinsmen whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took men, ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsmen, Naomi, that is to come is that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land which was a, our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it beside thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar mine own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. Now when things are going to get changed around in someone's life, there's always going to be witnesses, eyewitnesses. I know that if you buy a home and you, go to, uh, you end up going to the title company and then you've got to sign a contract and there's going to be some witnesses there that you're going to go in there, sit at the table, and they're going to have you sign your name on there. Now back then they did little things a little bit different. They didn't always sign pieces of paper and get tablets. They didn't have it so accessible as we do. And so but they used other things for when they decided to make a change or, or that something's going to happen. They had to do something that was going to, to bring proof that they had, uh, uh, something that took place in their life and so now the, he's calling these men aside because there's some business about to take place so he got all these witnesses there he got all ten of these men and he called them aside to hear the whole conversation on the situation that was about to take place because see Ruth and Naomi came out of another land and they're coming in there and they're, gonna, they're kinsmen and now they want to their inheritance and they want to uh, Come in. Now, a lot of change is about to take place because of Ruth and Naomi. Now, I don't know about you and what situation you may change in your life, but the world does change around. Believe it or not, you can change the world with what God does in your life. Now, I haven't even begun to get into the Scriptures, but the Lord's already revealing something to me. Now, I'm telling you what. Jesus says in His Word, He says, you are coming up, coming up in this place because God's wanting to change the world that is around you. Now, Jesus says in His Word, He says, if you'll obey me and do what I tell you to do and obey my scriptures and keep my commandments then I will do these things at, what did he say he said I will bless you and I will show you things that you thought you never see before okay now in his word this is what's about to take place so Ruth and Naomi are coming in this is going to take change the whole life a whole thing a span of things that's about to take place in Boaz and Boaz don't even know what's about to take place 
He has no clue what's about to take place in his life. Neither do you. You have no clue about what God's about to do in your life. You have no idea what God might be about to do. You don't know if you're Naomi. You don't know if you're Ruth. You don't know who you are. All you know is that you belong to Jesus Christ. Ruth and Naomi only knew that they belong to the Lord and that he will provide. The provider will provide. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. And so what is he going to do? He's going to make a change. And I'm telling you what, there's changes in our lives that take place. And I was watching. It's a wonderful life one day. I love to watch that every year. I got to get that movie out. And I got to put it. It's a wonderful life in that tape. Why do I put that in there? It makes me feel good inside to know that just because you're here that you can change the world around you. And believe me, don't think that God didn't put you here for no reason. He put you here for a reason because you're going to change the world that is around you. You're going to change the world that is around you. You change the world that is around you. What world? Am I talking about this big old green earth? No, I'm not. I'm talking about the world that you're in. Your children, those loved ones, those that you have in your life home, right there where you're at, on your job, where you go at, there's your world right there. Are you changing that world around you? What is he speaking to our hearts? What is he saying to us? Well, let's see. Here's what's about to take place. And so there's going to be eyewitnesses when things are starting to take place and people are changing in your life and things are taking place. People are watching, and there's eyewitnesses. And they take, and I'm telling you what, when I got born again, I ran home and I told my mom, guess what happened to me? I got an eyewitness. It was a whole church of people watching me. I was squalling and bawling. Some of them didn't even know what took place. But I'm going to tell you something. There were some witnesses that saw this little girl got saved, saw this little girl get born again. And she ran home, and she even testified about it and said, I got born again, and I got saved. And I was a witness to my own salvation. Well, here he is. He's got witnesses. And the kinsmen say, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. In other words, he can't take away his own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself. Now he's talking to Boaz. Now this was a manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man, now listen to this. They didn't get a piece of paper. They plucked off his shoe, and he gave it to his neighbor, and this was a testimony in Israel. Now I'm not going to <laughs> give you my shoe, but I'm going to kind of paraphrase. Here we go, Donna. Guess what? Take my shoe home. And so when she can pull that shoe out later. Hey, I got your shoe. I know what happened. I witnessed and I testified. Now, that's why they did things. They didn't take it and write it. But I'm going in that closet and I'm going to pull that shoe out and I'm going to show you. Yeah, we had a conversation. There was 10 of us. There were witnesses. And this reminds you, 50 years down the line, here's that old shoe. I'm going to give you my shoe and I'm going to show you. This is what's about to take place. And so as a witness, they plucked off their shoes and they gave it to the other ones as a witness. In other words, that shoe is going to be their verification right there that something's about to change. There's some changes about to take place. To for what? To confirm all things. A man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor, and this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So that kinsman told Boaz, Okay, now, I can't do this, but you need to buy it for yourself. Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe, and Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was in Limelech's and all that was Chilion's and Melion's and on the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead. To raise up, now I'm telling you what, this is, <laughs> this is powerful stuff. Because Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of the Malon, have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead. She's about to bring up the dead through, the, through a name. I mean, she's going to make sure these names is carried on. She's about to change some lives from here on out. Now listen to this. And the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. And from the gate of his place, ye are witnesses this day, and all the people that were in the gate. And the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come into thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build a house of Israel, and do thou worthily in Ephrata, and be famous in Bethlehem. And let thy house be like the house of Pharaoh's, whom Tamar bare unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz, he took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, 
the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. She bare a son. And guess what she did with that son? What, what a wonderful daughter-in-law. I'm telling you what, Sarah, you can just bring that baby right on over to my house, and I'll be his mama. <laughs> she can bring that baby right over there, but you know what? They want their little ones. I've tried to get the little ones. She won't, don't want that. <laughs> no, they're going to keep that one too. So I can't get those babies away, but guess what happened here? And the women said unto Naomi, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife, and went in, and he gave her sons. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which has not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. And Naomi took the child. Now listen to this. She took that child and laid it in her own bosom and became nurse to it. She became his mama. She nursed that baby. Yes, her, it had a mama, a, fle uh, a flesh mama, but Naomi is the grandmother of that child, and she became its mother and nursed that baby. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. Didn't say there's a son born to Ruth, but born to Naomi because of Ruth. But because of Naomi, she made a huge impact on Ruth, which is going to make a trail that's going to change lives forever. And they called his name Obed. He is a father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Pharaohs. Pharaohs begat Hezron, Hezron begat Ram, Ram begat Amminadab, Amminadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. And who it comes down from David? Jesus. There you go. It goes all the way down the trail. And guess what? Naomi, this little old lady that was out there serving the Lord in another place, somewhere off, somewhere else, and she knew who her God was. And she's about to not give up on the Lord because she knows that he can move in with his swift hand and he'll lead her by his spirit. I'm telling you what, don't you give up on the Lord because God will lead you by his Holy Spirit. He knows what's going on around you. He knows the world that you're in. He knows the circumstances and the situation. He'll change the world around around you he took place in this and I'm telling you what Naomi she thought she was left alone there for a second there but you know what Ruth loved her and says no I want to serve your God I want to go where you want to go Naomi I'll go with you and that's a good thing that Ruth did because see Ruth became a mother of Jesus all the way down not even know it but Naomi really Naomi really was because see God gave her that child and Naomi was really the mother of all of it but there she was. She turned around. She changed lives. She walked into Boaz's life. What happened? Boaz's life was changed. Boaz's life changed. Your life and I was changed. Why? Because of circumstances of one woman. That's the reason why I like that show. It's a wonderful life. Because, see, this one man went through all that, all those years, and he was changing lives. He was causing circumstances to take place. Things that you do each and every day, you being here today can change what happens tomorrow. I was telling them early in Sunday school class, just because you hear the word this morning might make a difference on what you do in the next hour or two. Whatever decision that you might make, it makes a difference. Let me tell you something. The Sunday school teachers... They make a huge difference. Becky, you make a huge difference in the lives of these children. You impact Taylor. You make a difference in what she may do next week and the month after that and the years down the line. There's teachers that were uh, that I was brought up under, and I'm going to tell you what, they made an impact in my life. I'll never forget their names. There's Sister Perkins. There's Brother Venable. There's a lot of them. That, Brother Bright. There's so many of them that made an impact in my life, and, and so much that uh, I have not forgot what the Word of God did in their lives and how it changed the lives around them and the world that was around them. What world? I was in her world at that time. A little girl. She had a little church right down there on Innes, somewhere right there in town. And she would just borrow a little place every now and then and there, and, and, or a house. She did whatever she could to get these little children inside there where she could teach them the word of God. What was she doing? She was impacting the world. She was impacting their lives because, see, they don't know what happened to those children. She has no clue, but Jesus knows where they're at. He kept up with Naomi. He kept up with Ruth. He kept up with Boaz. He kept up with them because, see, he knew that the impact was going to change the world one day. Is going to change them. 
And there's witnesses to this. There's witnesses to my life. There's witnesses to your life. He knows exactly. And here's someone else that made an impact. In Acts 6, 1 through 15, says, And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there was rose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. And the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. There, wherefore, brethren, look ye among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over his business. And we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And at the same, please the whole multitude. And they chose what? Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Tamon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, and a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples, listen to this, and they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the liberty, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and, uh, and of them of Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not, about, not able to resist the wisdom. They could not resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. And they suborned men in other words they even started to stir up strife they started to get on get start getting people on their side they started getting a group of people that they were going to start talking to we have heard him speak blasphemous words against moses now they're speaking against him against stephen and against god and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council what was happening he was about to change the world around him he's about to stir up something there i'm telling you what naomi stirred up ruth came in and she he stirred up and changed some things. I'm telling you what, but guess what happened? The people don't like it sometimes. I'm telling you, the enemy was fighting Ruth all along the way. But let me tell you something. It still worked out for her good. It still worked out while she was sitting in that field working away with her hands. But God had a plan for her. He didn't, she didn't give up, but she held on to the plan of God. Let me tell you, because she knew that God had a plan. And so here, here we got Stephen. And Stephen's full of the Holy Ghost. And he's working for God. And I'm telling you what, he's speaking the word of God to the people he's telling them what's about to take place he's telling them about their sins he's telling them what's wrong and i'm telling you they don't like it they don't want to hear it they won't don't want him uh, doing this and he's so full of power of god and he's got wonders going on and miracles among the people and they don't know what uh, understand what's happening because it wasn't the wisdom of man that gave them this it was the wisdom of god it came from the wisdom of god it came from the spirit of god it didn't come from some college it didn't come from some intellect but it came from the anointing of the the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which infilled Stephen, came into his life. It came from that. And what does that mean? Well, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, it means getting more of Jesus in your life. It means getting more of him on your side. It means getting something that the world don't have, wisdom that the world don't have, and it can't be revealed to you unless the Spirit of God reveals that to you. And they were not able to resist the wisdom. And when they got all these people stirred up and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looking steady. Now, I'm telling you what, they were more upset because they didn't want none of their customs changed. Steadfastly on him, saw on his face as it had been the face of an angel. They were looking steadfast on Steve. I'm telling you what, Steve was such as the day as this to change some lives that day. He was about to change some lives, and they were getting stirred up because they were. he was doing miracles, and he had the power to cast out demons. He could do a lot of things. I'm telling you what because of the holy ghost that came into his life and they did not like what's about to take place in their life they didn't like for him to change their customs and their traditions and the things that they were used to doing they were comfortable with and accompanied with they didn't understand this holy ghost they didn't understand the power of god they didn't understand the baptism of it they didn't understand how god could do miracles and how he could cast out demons and how he could do these things they could not understand what was going on and it was stirring up but i 
I'm going to tell you something. There's those that in this world today, they don't want no part of this. They don't want no part of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. They don't want no part of what Jesus can do in their life. Because, see, Jesus brings conviction, and when he does bring conviction, your life surely will change. You'll turn from the way that you once were, the way that you thought, the way that you did things. You will turn around, and you'll start doing them in a way that Jesus says to do it. No longer would this home be your home. No longer will you be desiring to see bigger homes or, or not, maybe not even bigger homes, but to think that this thing's going to be going on forever and ever. But you'll be looking to this heavenly home that you look forward to. You'll look forward to heaven. And all you've got your eyes on is the prize of the high calling. And all you can get your mind on and your heart on is those things that are set before you, your prize set before you, the mark of the prize of the high calling, the things that Jesus has set for you and I for our eternal life like I was speaking this morning in Sunday school for our eternal life because once I was dead and then I was resurrected unto life at eight years old you and I, I don't know when you became resurrected unto life but let me tell you something when this old body goes to the grave you're resurrected when you got born again when you got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost when Jesus touched your life that's when you got resurrected life for eternity because when you leave this world you're going to go somewhere and leave me this body when it leaves, it's going life eternal with Jesus Christ. And what does he say in his word? He says, Stephen, he sent him there. He pointed him for that time. He was a young man. He was a very young man. There was other young people around. There was a lot of people around. There's people watching this going on. They're watching all this happening. They're watching what's going on in your world today. They want to know what. They're curious what's going on. But some of them don't like it. And I'm going to tell you something, they're going to point a finger. They're going to group up together and say, I don't think that's really good. I don't think so. That doesn't go with the customs. That doesn't go with our tradition. That doesn't match up. I don't think I like that. You know, I think that's wrong. But I'll let me tell you something, as they were uh, falsely accusing him because they didn't want to change their customs because, see, this wasn't going along with it, and they didn't want to change. And all that said in council, looking steadfast, but you know what? He sat there just like an angel of God. Just like an angel of God, his face was as an angel uh, of an angel. Why? Because what was he there for? For a reason. Acts 7, 59, 60 says, And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this into their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Well, he, he cried with a loud voice. He didn't have to cry with a loud voice. Jesus could hear him if he had whispered. If he had said, Lord, don't lay this to them. But instead, he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He fell asleep. I don't know. He fell asleep because he was already resurrected into the Lord. He was already going to be one of his own. He might have walked out of that body way before they even finished and fell asleep. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said that he sent Stephen for, to be a, 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 a a witness to his people, a witness to those people to let them know their sins and turn from their wicked ways. But they didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to hear the truth. They wanted to, for Stephen to be just like them. He didn't want them to be, have all this anointing and this Holy Ghost. And What's all that about? We don't want to hear about that. We don't want to hear about all that anointing. We don't hear about the Holy Ghost. We want to hear. We don't want to hear about. It. All we want to hear about is uh, uh, everything's going to be okay, and we can live any life we want, and we can keep our customs and our traditions. Isn't that enough? Isn't that enough to come to church on Sundays? Isn't that enough to come to church on Sunday night? And how about Wednesday night? I'll just get in with my traditions, and that'll get me in. No, it won't. Traditions won't get you in. It's going to take Jesus to get you in. It's going to take you obeying God to get you in. It's going to take you seeking his faith. It's not going to be where we just sit still and this is enough. No, it takes us going forward. It takes us marching in the army like soldiers. It takes you and I putting on the whole armor of God. Why did he say put on the whole armor of God that you might withstand against the day in that evil day? Because he knows what we're going to have to face. He knows what world you may have to face in. And you have to have that whole armor on every single day. And what armor? I need the 
word of God in my life. I need the sword of the spirit. I need the shield of faith. I need my feet with shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I need a helmet of salvation. I need the breastplate of righteousness upon me. And I can't get it unless I'm going forward. A soldier don't give up and lay there on the ground. As long as he's alive, he's going on forward. He's not going to give up. He's going to keep marching in the army. And when he falls down, another soldier comes along and picks up that, that person. And let me tell you something. Do you think those soldiers are changing the world? Yes, they're changing the world. They make a huge difference in the world today. When they're fighting a battle and the battle's hot, let me tell you something. You're fighting a battle. Naomi was fighting a battle. Ruth was fighting a battle. Stephen was fighting a battle. What battle was he fighting? He had the whole armor on. You couldn't see this armor. You couldn't see the helmet. You couldn't see the shield. You couldn't see the sword of the spirit. You can't see all these things. But guess what? There's a spiritual thing that you cannot see. We're not warring against flesh and blood. But we fight against principalities and spirits that you cannot see. It's not where you can see it with your flesh and blood. It's on the spiritual side. And you can't know about the spiritual side unless you've been born again, unless you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. And sometimes, you, even if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God comes into your life, the Spirit of God, when you got born again, He starts revealing spiritual things to you as that born again child of God. Because some people receive the anointing, the Spirit of God, when they get born again, they receive the, the Holy Ghost then. And, uh, and then He adds some power on it on top of that. Like mine, I got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost at 17 or 18 years old, and then I got another touch of another power. I remember standing there, coming in from Brother Lee's church, and I come and walk in through the door, and I was so on fire for God, I couldn't even hardly stand it. And speaking in another language, walking through the door, and I couldn't stop speaking in tongues. And I tell you what, I walked in, and, and Jerry said, what's the matter with you? And I said, well, I just got a touch, another touch from God, and the power of God's all over me. I can't even stop. And I was standing there at the icebox, trying to open the icebox door, and I said, I got to go pray. I can't stand here anymore. I got to go pray and see what God wants for me to do. And I went into the bedroom, and that little single mobile, home and I went in that bedroom I know how loud I was I was pretty loud wasn't it Jerry <laughs> I don't know what Jerry was doing don't care what he was doing I'm sure he was on the other side of the wall listening what's she doing in there well his leg was a kicking like that at the icebox it wouldn't stop. It just wanted to worship God. It, God wasn't through in my life. He wasn't through. He was going to let me know what the future held for me and that he had me to be a soldier in the army, to go forward, to live for him, not to give up, not to turn to the left nor to the right, not to give up when things are not looking good. I tell you what, this morning I came in here with my head down. I came discouraged. Oh, I just felt so gloomy. I Maybe it's the weather. I mean, I can be honest with you, can I? I felt kind of gloomy this morning. I was, oh, oh, Marie, oh, Becky, Sajin, help me. I feel so gloomy. And I'm so sad I lost my dad. And I know he's in heaven. See, I can, I can rejoice over that because I know where he's at. But I was just gloomy about this, and gloomy about my daughter. You know, I got a son-in-law that took him away. If you're listening to this, Joe, I don't mean it. Anyway, <laughs> if you hear that. But, you know, you feel that. You got, oh, I was having self-pity. And then what do I do? Oh, I get in the Sunday school book. Here comes my Sunday school book. And guess what it's on? Martha. Going about so much, Mary sitting at Jesus' feet, receiving something from the Lord, and Martha just feeling sorry for herself, getting in self-pity and not learning anything, not getting her priorities straight. So I'm so glad that I went back there to Marie, and Marie said, get in here, we're going to pray. <laughs> we're going to pray now. And I got up that morning and prayed, but I just didn't stay there long enough around Jesus' feet till he touched me this morning. And, boy, I got a touch then. And I came in here, and I got into that. And, boy, I tell you what, I was just, I just slept and got taught this morning by the mouth of God. And I tell you what, he'll change your world through different individuals. Now, Naomi and Ruth have no clue who I am. I won't meet them till I get to heaven. But do you know that Naomi and Ruth changed my world? Do they change your world? Changed my world for eternity. Stephen changed my world. Paul changed my world. Jesus changed all of them. 
He changed every one of our worlds. That one person, that one little child that came into this world changed every one of them, and they changed our world forever. I'm going to tell you what, Stephen changed my world forever. Paul changed my world. David changed my world. The Word of God changed my world. He wrote all these people's names in there because, see, they changed lives. They changed the people around them. They changed the area around them. And as you get in there, that Word of God, and you learn about all these people, you learn about Solomon, you learn about David, you learn about Daniel and the lion's den, and you learn about all these children of God. They changed many lives around them. But let me tell you something. They changed this old girl. They changed my life too. And the Word of God was going into me as a little bitty child, and it was changing me from day to day, Sunday to Sunday, from month to month, from year to year. And I'll tell you what, he's still changing me from 10 years to the next 10 years. And if I'm old and gray and if God don't take me on before then, but let me tell you something. I'll be changed in the likeness of him one day. <sighs> Change him from day to day to be more like Christ. And see, the anointing and the Holy Ghost is real in my life because it gave me strength to go on. And I tell you what, I went in there and I prayed a little while and I got in the, uh, under the, that anointing and let him speak to my heart. Sometimes we have to just stay in his presence until he speaks to our heart. Sometimes you have to get some CDs and you have to sit around the table and you have to listen to them all day until God pierces through the darkness that the enemy's trying to crowd in on you. Because, see, it's a battle. It's an ups- uh, uh, uphill battle. But Jesus, what did Jesus say? He said, it's not my, your battle, but it's my battle. Let me fight your battle. He said, why are you cumbering about so much, Martha? Why are you so upset? Why are you going on about this so much? Let me tell you something. You can relax in me. You can rest in me and know that if you'll just sit at my feet, that I'll give you the strength. I'll give you, and I'll rest your weary mind. I'll, I'll take away the grief and the sorrow in your life if you'll trust me. And then it says in Acts 22, 20 through 23, it says, And when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by. Oh, Lord, who is this? I was standing by. There's always a lot of eyes in the Bible. You know why? Because there's some I people. And I'm an I. You are an I. It's I. I was also standing by. Guess who this is? Paul. Paul was standing by watching Stephen. And consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. <laughs> Paul didn't know he was about to be changed. Just because of Stephen coming along, here come a lo- young Stephen who became a martyr, who got stoned for the gospel, for the preaching of the gospel, for preaching about the Holy Ghost, for preaching of something that they didn't understand. A wisdom of God? Are you kidding? What are you talking about? There's, a, there's something else more than what we got? You mean there's more than the traditions that we're used to? There's more than these, uh, these uh, actions that we take place? You mean there's more things that I can have? Yes, there's a feeling that comes on the inside, and it says, I, did I not walk with you and it burned within me? I'm going to tell you something. Jesus changed their lives. He said, did I not walk with you and the bone, didn't it burn within me? And they were walking along the, uh, in the, the, uh, on their way to, uh, where was that at? They were on their way to somewhere with Jesus and the people in the group. And they were on their way and Jesus had come up out of that grave. And, he said, and they got to a place, they said, but did it not burn within me when he revealed himself to them? Oh, but when we talked with him, it burned within me. What burns within me? The Holy Ghost that's inside of me. Jesus living in you and I. It burns within us. It burns within my marrow. It burns within my heart. It's a burning flame that is inside of me and you. He burns within us because he talks with us. He walks with us. He speaks to our minds. And when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consented unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. They wanted to get rid of him completely. I'm telling you, do you think they're going to like you? Do you think the world's going to like 
this anointing? Do you think they're going to love the Holy Ghost? Do you think the homosexuals are going to love the Holy Ghost? Do you think the lesbians are going to love the Holy Ghost? Do you think the thieves are going to love it? The robbers, those that are, are, are hypocrites, those that are, are wa- not even washed in the blood of the Lamb, never been chosen by God, those that, ain't even, uh, that are created for the day of evil, they're going to love you? No. But he said you would find favor in the eyes of men. So you might find favor because of God, but they will not love you. And there's going to be those that persecute you for righteousness sake. They're going to tell you this isn't so. This is not right. This is not true. This is not of God. But that's not because of uh, this lack of knowledge. It's not understanding. It's not knowing what this is about. And they gave him audience unto this word and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust in the air. I mean, they were casting off their clothes. They were going, they were carrying a havoc on. And Saul, Paul was watching all this before he, uh, Saul, before he became Paul. He's watching all this going on. And I'm telling you what, he watched Stephen become a martyr. He watched Stephen become something that he couldn't understand why he would die for the cause. Why would he do this all the way to the end for this cause? But I'm going to tell you, so even then, Stephen cried out real loud so everybody could hear, lay it not to their cause. And what did Jesus do on the cross? The same thing. The reason why? Because he was innocent all the way up into death. He cared about the souls of men. He cared about the people. He cared about their lives. Life. He cared about where they're going to end up at. He cared. That's why it made such a difference in how he changed their life because he cared about where they're going to be. At. He, if you care about people's souls, you love people's souls, you care about it, you're going to make a huge impact. You're going to make a difference in some lives. It might not be but one or two that you're going to make a huge difference in. But let me tell you something. It's going to change that world around them. It's going to change the world that they go into. It's going to change the world that you're in. But let me tell you something. You will be be the one that he uses to change that world but you got to be a willing vessel you want to be used by God you got to say I am him I am Stephen I am Paul I'm those things I'll be a vessel that will humble Paul didn't humble himself immediately there he was right there along with it I think I'll keep these clothes he thought he was doing something right this was a good thing and he kept all those clothes of those people and murdering that blood splattered on Stephen's blood was splattering all over those clothes why they throw those clothes down there because it had his blood on it it had Stephen's blood on it and he thought he was doing something for the kingdom of God he thought he was doing something right he thought by destroying these people this man this was a right thing but let me tell you you made a martyr out of him all it did was say he meant more he, this thing is something's real about this thing and I'm gonna tell you Paul was changed on his way to Damascus and then he became a world changer as well whose world are you gonna change how many lives are you gonna change from here on out after you're gone if this world was to tarry 500 more years or 1,000 more years, how many, how many years down the line will your world impact and change people's lives that you have impacted their lives so much that your name is there for years and years? Brother Venable, he ain't even here. He ain't been here for years and years, but I still quote his name. Why? Because he impacted my world. He impacted our lives. But Jesus impacted my life more than anybody. And I'm going to tell you, he came to shake the world. He came to change us. He came to change our world, what we go through in our lives. And that's what he did. Jerry, will you put a CD on? Jesus changes you and I from day to day. And maybe he's dealing with you, and he wants to give you a closer walk with him. Maybe he wants to reveal himself to you more. Maybe he wants you to know more about him, more about what he has for you. There's gifts, and there's talents, and there's things that God wants to give us. There's gifts that he gives us and talents, and it's not for us to go to work. It's not for us to paint. It's not for us to decorate. It's not for those things, but t- I'm talking about gifts and talents that you use for the kingdom of God, that builds up the kingdom of God. Maybe it's own giving. Maybe it's teaching a class. Maybe it's, uh, it's preaching. Maybe it's ministering. Maybe it's running a sound booth. Maybe it's coming down here and just taking up offering. I don't know what God has laid on your heart to do in the house of God, but there's callings that he gives each and every one of them. And you say, well, I don't have one of those callings. I don't have one of those things gives in my life. And, and maybe it's song musician. Maybe it's, it's music, whatever it may be. But God will give you a, mu- a, a gift that you use for the kingdom of God, not for the flesh. 
flesh, not for what we can gain in this world, but something that gains in the kingdom of God that causes people to come to know Jesus Lord as their Savior, that draws them to God, that before this world ends, before he raptures us up out of the graves, or he raptures us on this world, that you have impacted somebody's life. And when you stand up there for judgment day, your reward is up in heaven and what you've done and what you've done on this side. He says, I'll reco- uh, he says, I'll reward you according to your works. What works? The, what you've done for him down here. Were you working for the Lord? Were you doing something for God? Were you writing letters? What, what, what good things? What did you do? Jesus keeps a record of everything. He keeps a record of what you're doing. He keeps a record, Sarah, of you coming on and being faithful to the house of God. Sage and Becky, he keeps a record. Don, he's keeping a record of everything that you do. He keeps a record, Marie. Y'all, he's keeping a record of everything that you do. He's keeping a record. Your reward's on the other side. How many lives? You think you're not imp- impacting lives? Yes, you are. You impact everybody's life around you. You make an impression. You make an impact. And so this morning, if you want a closer walk with the Lord, you want me to pray with you this morning, lay hands on you and pray that you receive more of his anointing, more of his spirit. If Maybe you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You want the Holy Ghost. Hey, this altar is open. This place is open. You can kneel down at this front. You can kneel here at the pew, or you can come down here and stand at the front and raise your hands up. We'll pray for you, lay hands on you, and pray for you. But this morning, if you have any sickness in your body and you want a closer walk with the Lord, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you want him, this is the place. And if you want a closer walk with the Lord, everybody would, let's stand. I should have had y'all stand a few minutes ago. <laughs> It's easier to step out than it is to get up and then step out. <laughs> i got to train myself in those areas. But you know what? Well, that's the way we're supposed to feel. We're supposed to sit at his feet like Mary. We want to drink from that cup in his hand. We want to lean back against the Lord and feel his heartbeat, not our heartbeat, not, not what's going on around us, not feel all these things. Marie said, you should feel those things. I said, you're right. Well, I shouldn't. I should feel nothing but the presence of God. I should feel his heartbeat. I should feel his presence. And that's right. Let, let's pray. Because I don't want to feel like that. I want to feel and know that all I have to do is lean in him and lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Everybody would, let's bow your heads. Lord Jesus, right now, as you look on at every heart here tonight, you see what they're need of this morning. You know what more that they'd like to have. What more anointing that they would want in their lives. More of you, Jesus, in their life that they make an impact on other lives. That they make an impact in the world that they're in. In the world, those lives around about them. Just like Stephen impacted those around him. And Paul impacted those around him. And, Mary, uh, and Naomi. All these people that impacted lives around them. Lord, I pray right now that there's anyone that they come to this place, Lord, that they come to these altars down here at the front and draw closer to you. If anyone's sick in body, that you draw them to you. Lord, bring them down here, Lord, that they receive their healing this morning. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus. If there's anybody, I'll wait a few minutes before I dismiss.